Good morning, Comic Book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your Evolver No Shorty, and we're going to review Monomyth today. Got to be honest, this one grabbed my attention because of the title. I like stories about stories. Why? Well, one of several reasons. Well, I'm a big Kieran Gillen fan. I like the idea of people using stories to tell stories about stories. I like that recursive kind of nature. And in this one, yes, we absolutely have a story of a monomyth, uh, basically the hero's journey, which is thoroughly unsurprising, is what we do. Now, I could spend a lot of time talking about the hero's journey and monomyths, but just go and watch CJ the X's like, what, hour and a half long video about it. You'll get way more information than I'm going to give you in a five minute review about a comic book. But suffice to say, the standard thing that most people think of, uh, of the monomyth or the hero's journey, the one that's at least in the uh, West, I was going to say West, Western culture, in European culture, shall we say, uh, would be King Arthur, or the Arthurian legend, at least. Um, and it gets heavily referenced fairly early on. There is um, a set in a time or a place that's not quite our own and far away, um, and it is a wizard casting a spell to try to do something as he's on his last legs. Now, there's a lot of vagueness to exactly what he's trying to do here, but the spell ends up effectively summoning seven people from a more contemporary time period, our own, to his fantasy world where magic exists, which looks very much like medieval England, but I'm not going to say it is or isn't. Now, bet between him casting, well, starting casting the spell and what actually happens, there's some genuinely beautiful bits of artwork. Um, there's a fantastic spiral page where we get him using the incantation of the spell, um, and the imagery they use is very Arthurian, but not explicitly just Arthurian. There is aspects of just uh, Monomyth and uh, Hero's Journey, but stuff going on in there, but it's fantastic. Done in a spiral tells you quite a lot about the intent of this. It is the cyclical nature of stories, things going in circles and happening over and over again to the two people in different ways, but still the same story. But the spiral means it's eating its own tail, it's going in on itself, and it's always near the end, which is true because we are very heavily told that this uh, wizard is running out of power and you might not have much time left to do this spell. Now, we then jump to a variety of viewpoints uh, in a more contemporary setting. This is very much the let's get the gang together part of a group story, which I have criticised in the past, but when it's done well, it's entertaining. And I do like this one. Uh, for the most part, each character, each of the seven characters gets a page or a half page, and it's very quick bullet points on who they are. Um, it doesn't get into too much detail, but I like the pacing of it. It doesn't feel like instead of giving everyone like three or four pages and really slowing the story down, but still not getting to much depth, we get a simple snapshot and we kind of have to trust that the creators are telling us all we need to know right now. And I do trust these creators. Um, names, by the way, uh, David Hassan and Cecilia Lovalvo. Apologies if I pronounced any of those names. Um, because the pacing feels good, it feels tight, but they also spend the time necessary to add some depth to the artwork and how the artwork tells a story. Um, because when they see this wizard appear in front of them, they are they give an exclamation then it jumps a page and they're in a different period and they complete the last word of their exclamation um this is quite nicely done with fantastic use of negative space the guttering is really well done and again it feels like an almost cyclical bit of storytelling it's not 100 percent, but it doesn't have to be because it is also a confusing to happen if it would have been crisp and clean i think i probably would have found it a bit unsettling that it looks that crisp and clean speaking of crisp clean artwork this is not that and i have said repeatedly i prefer this kind of artwork i like it was a little bit grungy a little bit scratchy especially when you're telling these kind of dark and dirty stories about magic and magic gone awry and people who are either good or bad or somewhere in between and the only time it feels let down is a rather wonderful, almost Escheron uh, sequence of stairways, moving stairways at this point. It's not, it doesn't go full Escher, it's not like up on the downstairs kind of things or a different dimensional stuff, but it still has very much a feel of that. But I like that it isn't 100% that, it's standing on the shoulder giant instead of riding on them. But I can't help but feel that maybe a slightly cleaner line to show the, ang uh, the rigid angularity of it might have helped. But then I remind myself that this is still a medieval setting and the idea of nothing being 100% perfect absolutely is fine. A minor gripe in an otherwise fantastic uh, comic book full of great artwork. Um, we are left, after all this has happened, uh, with introduction of seven, eight, nine characters at least, without much of an idea of what's going on. Like, as I said, we don't know 100% what the nature of the spell is other than it's brought these people because they have... I don't know, probably a destiny to fulfill. We don't know why this wizard was getting them to do this destiny. We don't know why some of them are referred to as wizards. Um, all we know is we have to come back and find out if we want to know what's going on. It feels more like that in this code book than almost anything else I've read recently. Quite often, even in issue one, tries to be a self-contained little thing. It gives you its beginning, middle, and end. This is just, okay, now what? And it leaves me there wanting more. 
And I do want more. I am going to check out issue two of this one at least. Um, I think it's only going to be a miniseries. It might be one that I don't purchase until it goes uh, full trade so I get the full story. But I have a feeling that if issue two manages to maintain this uh, pace of storytelling, which still has time for decent characterization, uh, it weaves together uh, relationships, but leaves a lot more questions unanswered. I think if you can maintain that for an issue two as well, I'm probably going to be just as eager to pick up issue three the moment it comes out too. And that is good storytelling, and I cannot complain about that. Uh, that's it for me for now, though. Uh, I'll be back again with another review before the end of the week. Until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>